Hello? <laughs> this is a, another episode of favorite fantasy characters and what we can learn from them. And today I'm going to be looking at and analyzing and learning from one of my all-time favorite heroes and his name is Pug Condoin. Pug has a massive, massive story. He appears in 24 books so <laughs> that's a lot and so for the purposes of this I'm going to cover his um, for the purposes of this video I'm just going to be looking at his origin his founding story his story started in the Rift War saga written by Raymond E Feist you might know the book called the magician so that was the first one in the trilogy the second one was a darkness at Sethanon and the third one no sorry the second one was Silkthorn and then the third one was a darkness at Sethanon so so, let's start by talking about why I love Pug so much. Pug's story from being a lonely orphan through to being a magician's apprentice through to being one of the most powerful sorcerers in the whole world, in any world, is quite a prolific character arc. The arc that he goes through, it's inspired incredibly imaginative writing on my in my life and his story has always been super super influential on my own writing because the arc was so epic another thing that i really like about pug is the way he endured hardships he went through massive hardships he was um, he had to go on a very long and grueling journey as a very young man. He had to endure the ridicule and the feelings of abandonment of being an orphan. He had to go through slavery. The way he endured all of his hardship with an almost inhuman determination, it, the way he refused to give up made him seem real. It made him seem like he was someone that I could actually meet in real life that was going through a lot of really difficult things but kept on piling through them and kept on enduring no matter what came their way and that makes him super relatable to me. The last thing or one of the last things that I really love about Pug is of course the ultimate ultimate magical destruction scene where he is witnessing other slaves being slaughtered and one of them is potentially his wife and they're his friends and he flies into this magical fury where he absolutely destroys an entire arena and he destroys other powerful mages and it it, it would just always go down in history as one of the best magical destruction scenes that I have ever seen or I've ever read about in any of my books in any of the books that I've read and I've read a lot of fantasy so saying that is actually it's quite something so oh, that's I will always remember that scene if you haven't read it you have to read it. Pug's story in short Pug started out as an orphan and he was raised by a cook and his wife along with their own natural born son, Thomas. Uh, at a young age, Pug was apprenticed as a lesser path magician, and, but he never really showed any talent until one day he had to save a princess from, a, uh, some, from some sort of orc or troll. And in, when it came to saving her, he used magic in a very non-conventional way, in a way that everyone thought impossible. He didn't use magic as through conduits of spells and words and rit rituals, but instead it poured out from him in the form of raw energy. To cut a long story short, Pug embarks on a long journey um, with a fellowship of sorts and he is captured by soldiers from another realm, another world, the world called Mid Midkimia. And he he's, he's a slave for four years. He endures an unimaginable suffering and torture and abuse until he is discovered as a greater path magician. And he, then he is taken away and to a place called the Assembly where he is trained on the greater path of magic. He spends another four years training on the Greater Path and then he graduates and he is renamed Milamba. I've always loved that name, Milamba. <laughs> just gonna check my hair quick. 
<laughs> One day, Milamba, Pug, attends the Imperial Games. There he is shocked by the wanton cruelty committed against other slaves. Some of them his friends, former friends, some of them from his own um, birth world. And in a show of astonishing magical power, he destroys everything. Oh, so good! So after that, after the display, after his rage has subsided, he flees with his wife and his son through the rift back to his own homeworld, where he plays an integral role in ending the war between the two different worlds. In the second book, called Silverthorn, Pug is captured and he is submitted to torture. Uh, he is put in these, sh I think it's either shackles or collar, that subdues his greater magic, his greater path magic. And it's then, under, under the torture and under the stress, that he realizes that he can use both powers, something that no one or very very few people throughout history have been able to do and he uses lesser path magic to escape from his captors. Using these powers, after he frees himself, he makes his way to find an ancient race of elves who are hidden, who have locked themselves away beneath a thick layer of ice. It's there that he trains to use both his greater and lesser path magics in a way that only the elves can train him to do. From there, he then uses his newfound powers to create, to destroy, to battle and destroy an incredibly powerful evil force. The first thing that we can learn from Pug is through it by an analysis of his very interesting character arc. He follows a typical hero journey, but it never really feels like it. It never feels like you're watching a hero. It feels like you're watching almost... I don't know how to describe it, but it doesn't feel like a typical character arc. And his story of the Chosen One is... It builds really, really gradually, but still in a way that keeps you hooked and keeps you wanting to know what happens. What we can learn from this is something really, really key, and that's if someone can tell what character archetype or what narrative arc you're using, then you're not writing well enough. That means you're being a bit too obvious, it means that you are not telling your story well enough, and as soon as someone realizes that you're writing for the hero, or you're writing for the damsel in distress, or you're writing for the typical villain, it's going to kick them out of immersion. We're all kind of sick of the normal archetypes, the normal narrative arcs. So write it well enough that it doesn't, that it isn't obvious if you're going to use a typical hero story or whatever narrative arc, um, arc or basic plot or archetype you choose to use. The most real thing you can do to achieve this is to learn what the arc is, learn what the archetypes are, learn what the basic plot styles are, and subvert them learn what they are, put those tools in your belt because they're going to happen in your writing without you even realizing it and if you don't realize it it's very likely that your writing is going to become quite cliche. That's something that that's advice that I've had to tell myself over and over again and I will never regret the time I spent going and learning about archetypes and basic plots and narrative arcs and that kind of thing. It's well worth the time, I promise. The second thing that we can learn from Pug, and this is something that I'm trying to model my writing around a lot, is that his, his rise to power is so tantalizingly slow. The writer gives us a taste here and a nibble there, keeping us super interested without giving us everything too quickly until one glorious moment where everything comes full circle and all of those tastes are served to us in a banquet of magical power and destruction that just makes you so happy. <laughs> and he does the Faced does this repeatedly throughout the Rift War Saga, throughout the trilogy. He's always building Pug's power or other characters' power slowly in a way that drip feeds you until, yes, you get the fucking climaxes like you're jizzing in your pants. The learning we can take from this is 
don't be gratuitous in your writing. Make your reader work for it. Sorry, I'm just adjusting my notes. We all love scenes of magical destruction and retribution and we all love it when magic happens. But if it happens too quickly or if it happens too often, it loses its appeal. And then it's not magic, it's just normal. So make your readers work for it. It's something I'm trying to do is give little drips and little drops and make them work for it because when the payoff happens and they've had to work for the payoff and you've built your readers up properly, it is glorious as opposed to you trying to achieve a glorious scene but you've been giving them everything from the start. The thing about Pug, yes he's a powerful magician but the thing that makes him absolutely unstoppable is his connection to other powerful beings. Yeah, he's connected to other super powerful beings and that increases his awesomeness. The learning from this is that power is more awesome when there are lots of powerful characters. You're, I'm gonna take a, a broad guess and say that most of my viewers your characters aren't ex your characters don't exist in isolation so if you have a power character and you've built them off and you've paid off and you've made us love this power character and there's nowhere really for him to go then add a connection to another powerful character that's something also that i'm trying to achieve in my writing is those connections between power players that really makes us froth at the mouth i mean think marvel universe all of those power characters together Ah, so good. So here's a summary of learnings. Number one, if your basic plot or if your character archetype or if your narrative arc is obvious, it means you're being unoriginal and you should learn what those devices and those tools are so that you can subvert them and write in a more original fashion. Number two, don't be gratuitous with your character's power. Make your audience work for it and when it pays off make sure it pays off good and lastly number three don't your characters shouldn't exist in isolation your characters are connected and they should draw power from those connections thank you so much for watching this latest episode of favorite fantasy characters and what we can learn from them I love Pug, I love analysing these different characters and if you love it too, let me know in the comments, share your opinions, share your thoughts and if there's any other characters you would like me to analyse, I'm more than happy to do so. Please hit subscribe and follow me on Instagram, that's where I connect with other young writers and it's where I'm sharing updates and I'm, I'm really loving my creative journey, so join me on it. Thank you so much.